Greetings from Xi'an. This is Hua Yiping with Xinhua News Agency. Well, I am now at one of the ancient capital cities in China, Xi'an in northwest China's Shanxi province. So this city is known as the starting point of the ancient Silk Road. But why was that and how was the life, the trade and exchanges back in Tang Dynasty? Well, today I'm going to explore the Tang West Museum. So by visiting the largest market in Tang Dynasty, we're going to get a closer look into the thriving international trade and cultural exchanges at that time. Well, without further ado, let's get started. This museum is built exactly on the marketplace back in 1,300 years ago. And today I'm joined by uh, Christina Zhou from uh, the museum. Thank you so much for joining us. You're welcome. Good morning, IP. <laughs> Good morning. All right, so uh, Christina, can you tell us some of the uh, basic information about this museum? Yeah, this museum is called the Town West Market Museum. It is the first uh, privately operated level one museum in China. Mm -hmm. And we built right on the uh, west side, this original site. And also here, you may notice over there, <coughs> uh, it says a starting point of the Silk Road. So mm -hmm. in this museum, we're going to uh, get to know more about the Silk Road, Silk Road culture in Town Dynasty. Wonderful. And, mm -hmm. yes. And also we could get to know something about the business side, how people were doing business in Tang Dynasty, especially in the West Market. Exactly, exactly. So um, let's get started, I guess. Okay. Mm -hmm. Wow, this museum is very magnificent and very pretty. Yes, it is. You may notice that so we don't have many exhibitions or cultural relics ex exhibited here in the first floor. Mm -hmm. That's because here is the site hall and we're going to see some sites, original sites of the market oh. here. This is the first part. Mm -hmm. We could see some drain ditch here oh. because uh, there are a uh, waterway system, yes. a complete waterway system running through the market. So there are a lot of uh, like uh, this kind of a ditch yes. because according to the <coughs> historical records, there are two canals mm -hmm. here. Uh, one is called Cao Chu, the mm -hmm. other one is called Yong An Chu. Mm -hmm. So those two <coughs> man-made canals running through the markets. So thus, we have the complete like uh, transportation system. Wow. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Yes. Yeah. So these are the original site. Yeah. Exactly. Ah, it's being mm -hmm. preserved very well. Yeah. It's well preserved. This looks like a giant map. It is actually. Here, let's stand over right here, Chang'an, mm -hmm. Xi'an. This, this, Xi uh, yes. Today's Xi'an. Mm -hmm. This is a map of Silk Road, actually, Asian oh. Silk Road. See, from Chang'an towards the uh, uh, west. Yeah, to the yeah, west. There are many countries. Uh, mm -hmm. <coughs> to the furthest part was uh, over there. Rome. Rome. Oh. East Rome. So the street distance from Chang'an to Rome is about 8,000. 8,000 kilometers. Uh, kilom uh, sorry, 8,000 kilometers. Wow. So, mm -hmm. But Silk Road, although we've been like, talking about it and learned from our history book for a long time, mm -hmm. this idea of Silk Road was uh, actually put forward by, by a German geographer mm -hmm. called Rich, Rich Sofen. Mm -hmm. that idea. Uh -huh. uh, German geographer Rich Sofen. And in 1877, and he named it as uh, a uh, trading route mainly to trade the silk. Mm. So from his perspective here, um, we have uh, it is a trading it is a trading route, and we we have the Silk Road as a route here, basic route here, and we have a lot of businessmen running like or running around, not run, sorry, uh, running on the, on uh, the run, road. running on the road. Uh, towards Chang'an. So those businessmen, once they come to Chang'an, they got to have a place mm -hmm. uh, to, to sell leave, their, to rest, uh, to, uh -huh. yeah, and to rest to sell. sell their commodities, yes. right? So West Market back then in the 17th century was the largest uh, like uh, products distributing center in the world. In the world. In the world, wow. it was mm -hmm. the largest. Thus, it's pre being praised as a starting point of the Silk Road. So um, as a commercial site, site perspective, 
this is a like the starting point. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think maybe culturally it's also the starting point. Yes, it's also a kind of a cultural exchange center as well. Exactly. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And what are we looking at over there? It's the original site of West Market called mm -hmm. the Cross Street here. Mm -hmm. Now uh, we are at the cross street, cross street, uh, cross street of the West Market. Mm -hmm. It is called the northeast uh, side. Across, uh, oh, sorry, it's a northeast uh, cross street mm -hmm. here. So on the road, we could see clearly there are some road tracks. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. This is the first layer, and over there on the blue plate, you may notice some square ones. Mm -hmm. Can you guess what it is? It's oh. something next to the road, actually. Next to the road, yeah. are they houses? Oh, are they houses? No? Yeah, something like that. The, uh, like the stores, the shops. Oh, the shops. A, yeah, the base of the shops. Oh, <coughs> oh it's still there. It's still, yeah, still visible. There. You may mm -hmm. find out it's very uh, small, right, mm -hmm. comparatively, because the West Market was the largest international trading center in the 7th century in the world. Thinking about the international, like the largest one, yes. but the store was very small. Mm -hmm. Why is that? Mm -hmm. Because according to the documents, there are more than 40,000 uh, businessmen uh -huh. working, like doing business in the West Market at the peak. So 40,000. 40, wow. There are a lot of businessmen, there are a lot of uh, people in these markets. Mm -hmm. uh, that's why the shops are very small. Mm -hmm. In Tang Dynasty, according to its walled system, it's a kind of management system, people are only allowed to buy things within certain areas. For example, we have two markets in Chang'an. Mm -hmm. The first one is the East Market, yes. where the second one is the West one. And we have the same area, actually. But we serve different people. Uh, in the East Market, they sell uh, like this or more expensive uh, products because mm -hmm. uh, they serve like a uh, higher upper class mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. well in the West market here uh, there are more the civilians common yes. people mm -hmm. buying things here and also the West market is closely linked to the Silk Road that's um. where there are a lot of uh, foreign uh, businessmen just as you mentioned before mm -hmm. coming to Chang'an in the West market to do business mm -hmm. uh, but those areas are still strictly controlled so oh, okay. <laughs> although there are a lot of people here we, we don't expand it actually oh, okay I mm -hmm. see understand yeah thank you cool. All right, let's, go. let's go let's move on to the second floor sure. to see the permanent exhibition yes mm -hmm. so these are also the the site the original site right? yes original site to we'll say uh, <coughs> more clearly those mm -hmm. are uh, wheel tracks see these, it's these really are the, ah. wheel tracks are very uh, oh, very deep, yeah, very yes. deep and tough. So we, you can see a lot of like trade are going on yeah, at that time. Yes. Mm -hmm. So this is the permanent exhibition hall. Yes, mm -hmm. this way, please. Okay, thank you. This is the layout. What, the, yeah, the layout oh, of the West Market, West Market here. Mm -hmm. Yes, according to the archaeological excavation, the West Market is about one thousand thirty-one meters long mm -hmm. and nine hundred twenty-seven meters wide. Mm -hmm. Can you make a calculation? Do some math. It's about ten kilo uh, kilometers. Yeah, in Chinese we could say we, it's about 1,600 mu, oh. uh, which is about two and a half times as big as Tiananmen Square. Wow. wow. Okay. And in the West Market we could say there are four main streets dividing this market into nine different blocks, mm -hmm. right? Each street is about 16 meters wide, mm. which is about the width of the side hall on the first floor. We mm -hmm. just walked past yes. over there. Mm -hmm. And we could notice here that there are many different stores with different names, right? Yes. Like people selling oil, selling meat, selling mm -hmm. different kinds of food, paper, uh, especially this koma. Can you guess what kind of things? Uh, I think they it's sell. perhaps to feed feed the horses, right? Uh, or something with uh, related to the animals. Uh, this, yes. Yeah, animals. they sell animals and also slaves there. Oh. In this okay. Thomas. Okay. Uh -huh. And today, in Chinese, we see that there are many different walks of life, right? Mm. Like 360 different ones. Can you guess how many back then? Wow, I, I don't have like the exact answer, but I think looking on this layout, it has to be something over 100, right? Yeah, 
<coughs> it's over 100. According to the records, there are about 220, 220. different industries wow. in, in this, in, kind in of this market. market. Yes. Incredible. See, talking about the waterway system, mm -hmm. here you could notice that in the West market, there are not only camels and horses carrying <coughs> the products, commodities, mm -hmm. we have the big ships yes. as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's why the business is more booming in the West market mm -hmm. than the East market. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's been called the golden market, golden market. by our okay. famous point, Li Ba. Li ba. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Wow. And over here, you could see some of the pieces silk. of the silk. Oh, yes. Wow. It's very typical here. This piece is called the double griffin brocade. Mm -hmm. Griffin is an ancient oh. mythical animal in Greece. Mm -hmm. It has, see, eagle's head and a lion's body mm, mm. because they believe that uh, this kind of griffin was very powerful so Greek people like this kind of pattern and mm -hmm. once they come to town and they also want this kind of pattern in their clothes mm -hmm. but how can, can they do that uh, at that time <coughs> the techniques of uh, weaving the silk was very advanced mm -hmm. in, Ch in Chang'an we could customize for them actually wow, wow. so so this was made in, in Chang'an, but mm -hmm. with the Greek pattern. Yes. Mm -hmm. And the flower pattern in the middle of there was a typical Persian flower. Uh, okay. So here, um, in a typical Chinese silk, we could ha uh, enjoy the culture from the Europe mm -hmm. and also from the Central Asia. Yes, it's that's true. More mm -hmm. like a cultural exchange product. Yes, uh -huh. yes, definitely. So these are all made in China these, uh, with Chinese silk. Yeah, and it's very not. Uh, it's very popular for the foreign foreigners back then. Mm -hmm. Also, it's uh, <coughs> very popular uh, for local people. They like to buy it uh, as well. Oh, mm. It's I very see. open back then. And here oh. you may see some bronze mirrors from Tang Dynasty. Mm -hmm. The second one on the line here is called. Uh, um, you, you may find out four people playing a kind of game. Can oh. you guess what it is? They're holding kind of steak with a ball. Uh, on the ground. Yeah, is it? Uh, well, I, I saw the, the <laughs> yeah, uh, the introduction is called the polo game. <laughs> yes, it's a polo game. It's a little bit different from nowadays that game, but the polo game was originally from Persia, mm -hmm. uh, which is in the Central Asia as well. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> they got like imported, uh, spread it to China, to Chang'an, uh, through the Silk Road in Tang Dynasty. Oh. There, are, uh, there were 21 emperors in Tang Dynasty, and among them, mm -hmm. 15 loved to play this type of game, and they joined, oh. even joined, uh, got involved in this kind of racing as well. Oh, it's so interesting mm -hmm. to see that a Persian game is now welcomed in, in ancient China in Chang'an. Yes, yeah. very welcome. Wow. Mm -hmm. So the cultural exchanges back then was really strong, I would say. Yes. Mm -hmm. The ties oh. were really strong. Yeah. These are some of the uh, other artifacts, right? Yes, mm -hmm. some are collected from other places to present. For example, those glasses uh, were very precious as well because okay. they are from the ancient Rome. Ancient Rome. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh. Mm -hmm. Here you, you can see some uh, two tricolored portraits, those two horses. Mm -hmm. It's called the uh, one piece, is called the tricolored, three flowered horses. Uh -huh. Okay. Those tricolored portraits uh, in Tang Dynasty are for the burial purposes mainly. Yes. So <clears throat> you can see this type of uh, um, figures of this size buried under the ground for more than 1,000 years, but still it remained so intact. It's very yeah. precious. Yes, and the color is mm -hmm. very vivid now. Yes, mm -hmm. because the techniques uh, back then were very advanced as well. Mm -hmm. Even though they don't have the like, uh, thermometer, um, they still know how to control the temperature. Wow. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Temperature well. Also, three flower beans. Mm -hmm. <coughs> they trimmed the hair mm -hmm. of the horse into three like blocks, square, yes. Uh, yes. square blocks uh -huh. over there. But <coughs> it's like a new hairstyle, but you can't trim it uh, l like you want. That's because uh, it's a way to show people's uh, standards as well. Only people above level three could enjoy this type of, have oh. the privilege of uh, owning this type of horses. Okay, mm -hmm. I see. And this horses was originating in China or? Um, uh, there are 
there are many different horses back then in Tang Dynasty because uh -huh. the horse racing industry was very booming, um, very popular because in Tang Dynasty, <clears throat> horses are not only used in the daily life mm -hmm. uh, or in the military use, but also it's a, a kind of entertainment for the royal families. Yes. Yes. That's why just like nowadays, so we have many imported cars. Yeah. In town and say we have a lot of imported horses <laughs> as well. For mm -hmm. example, nowadays, when talking about the imported ho horses, you may, uh, you may think of a name like Han Xue Baoma, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, in Tang Dynasty, we also have this type of horse from Da Yuan. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Imported and horses. Imported wow. horses. Mm -hmm. and this is here. a statue of Li Bai, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. smart. <laughs> <laughs> you spotted him, his Li Bai, writing a poem in a certain place, right? Mm -hmm. This place <coughs> is called the Hu Ji Tavern. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's a kind of special place, uh, in very unique place in uh, West Market, uh, selling different uh, wines, um, like especially foreign wines okay. here. And a lot of people, including Li Bai, like to come over here, mm -hmm. not only to enjoy the foreign wines. See, from the uh, figure, you could find out those are foreign girls dancing, yes. uh, kind of uh, Hu Xuan dance, which is also another uh, foreign dance. Oh, okay. And this girl is pr playing Pi Pa, this kind of musical instrument is uh, from uh, uh, foreign places as mm. well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, Talking about foreign wine, what kind of wine can you think of? Uh, like the the red one from Georgia, from uh -huh. uh, France. France. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, we have a lot of uh, different varieties, right? But mm -hmm. in Tang Dynasty, they can enjoy like, the port wine from Gaochang, which is in Xinjiang uh -huh. nowadays. Turfan. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Also, they could have uh, uh, San Le wine from Persia mm -hmm. and Long Gao wine from Turkey. Even uh -huh. mm -hmm. there are. About like thirteen famous local wines in China as mm -hmm, well, mm -hmm. and one of them named after after West Market. It's called Xi Shi Qiang. Xi Shi Qiang. Ah, uh -huh. wow. So just as we <coughs> know that uh, mm -hmm. uh, horse racing was very like popular back then, yes. so a lot of. Uh, stores and business uh, were related to this. For mm. example, this one is called the harness shops. Harness shops uh -huh. okay. It's specialized in providing the accessories for horses. Mm -hmm. uh, like this one is very beautiful, right? Yes. Uh -huh. and the are. horse is very tall. Yeah, very it's strong. Uh, very strong. Mm -hmm. We have also shops uh, to sell food for, for the horses mm -hmm. and the places for horses to live even. Okay, so it's a whole industry. <laughs> whole industry. <laughs> See here we have four pieces of replicas of uh, beautiful clothes, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and the, those kind of styles are from Tang Dynasty. Yes. <clears throat> but it's called Hu Fu, like foreign clothes. Mm. Can you find out the difference between the Hu clothes with the traditional Chinese ones? Um, well, I think the, for the, the male, I think they're, uh -huh. uh, the, 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 the shirt is much longer, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And uh, for the girls, I, th I think girls in Tang Dynasty, they dress pretty loose and the, the, the skirt is long, but here uh, for the female, actually, the, the, the shirt is pretty short. Yeah, like the oversized <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. shirts like nowadays. And here, for example, the, this one uh, is called uh, Ru Qun in mm. Chinese. It has two parts here. The first part on the top is a short sleeve uh, coat, while the long dress over there is in pink. And uh, they have a pink ribbon made of silk as mm -hmm. well. It's a typical like foreign clothes, but it was very popular in Chang'an. People, local people liked to, to wear this type of clothes. Very pretty, uh -huh. yes, yes uh -huh. as well. So you, you could look closer about those two girls here. Uh -huh. They're dressing like male's clothes, right? Oh, that's true. In Tang Dynasty, uh -huh. which shows it was a very open back then for the girls. The social status of female were higher mm. <coughs> than other dynasties. People could 
wear nail clothes so without like, covering their face yes. uh, very confidently walking yes. on the streets and females even could ride horses uh, oh. back then oh. uh -huh. so it was a very open dynasty open yeah, society very, very open and inclusive yes. actually so talking about the foreign clothes uh, local people like to wear that so, uh, can you guess up what about the foreign foreigners once they come to china do you think they like to wear our local clothes of course, I think because when you're you in Rome, you need to you know act and do as Rome, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> we could tell from those two figures here. Uh -huh. It's called this one is a military officer because uh, he's holding a sword oh. uh, over there, and this yes. one is holding a plate, mm -hmm. and it's a civil officer oh. <coughs> in China. Oh. Yeah, from from the dress you can see it's typical like traditional Chinese dress, right? But the facial appearance uh -huh. are they locals? I don't think they are locals. <laughs> so they are foreigners. Yeah, they are. They are foreigners. And they are foreigners working in the government back then. Yes, wow. in mm. China. Because mm -hmm. uh, say there are many, there were many foreigners coming to China mm -hmm. to um, like have a career, and they they can be businessmen, right? Mm -hmm. So working in the West Market to mm -hmm. make a living, mm -hmm. and also they could study here, and just like uh, those coins that we saw from Japan, they could learn the advanced technologies and bring back to their country. Yes. Also, they could stay here, study, and work as a civil servant in wow. Tang Dynasty, wow. even in higher positions. Can wow. you tell? How can we tell it's, uh, they're in high positions? We could tell from the plate the plate. holding. Yeah. Uh -huh. Only like uh, officers above level five could, could uh, hold this kind of plates mm. to like discuss the uh, politics with the empress. Wow. I think this this is this is incredible. I mean it's uh, it's even unimaginable today. I mean can you imagine a foreigner working in uh, well, a country yeah, yeah 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 the government today yeah uh -huh. it's very rare. It's very exactly. rare. So it, indeed, I think Tang Dynasty, the society was so open and inclusive and diverse. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is. Say those camels? Yeah. Uh, those are all from Tang Dynasty. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but they're, they are in different shapes, different sizes. Different sizes, because we collected them from different provinces. Ah. Uh -huh. I see. Uh, camels were a very important transportation tool back mm -hmm. then in the, along the Silk Road, right? You may notice, although they, they've been collected from different areas, they have the same uh, si similarities here. Like mm -hmm. It's all double-bumped camels, yes. right? Those double-bumped camels are also imported from back train of Central Asia. We call them back train camels. Back train camels. Back train, ah. yeah. It's very interesting the things they were holding here. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. can, you, can you guess what, what kind of thing is this? Like the green one? Like the twisted roll here? Um, is it like some of the materials that we use to, to make some clothes? Wow! Really? Yeah, that's the correct answer. <laughs> yeah. wow, it's, just, a, uh, uh, it's a kind of original silk you have ah, in the woven together. Okay. Uh -huh. ah, and it's a very precious along the Silk Road. So okay. uh, as those uh, businessmen, uh, they, they didn't have to bring their own coins mm -hmm. or own currencies because mm -hmm. it's very heavy and mm -hmm. uh, they, they could only, uh, they can make an exchange yeah, with that. Make an exchange by things. So, with a very light silk, ah, just like light that. Silk. Mm -hmm. Okay. And over here, you could see the food you have. <clears throat> they, they were eating in town then, see? Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And they have the shish kebab back then. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of a barbecue. <laughs> barbecue, Can yeah. Can you guess what kind of meat they were I eating? Think it's lamb and beef. Uh, not beef, it's not lamb, beef, lamb. 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 Oh, yeah. okay. Because uh, uh, in town dynasty, it's uh, unlike today, like we eat beef, pork, etc. Um, most of them, but the <coughs> beef, uh, those cows, or cattle. Cattle, yes. Cattle. Cattle were protected by the government oh. because it's a very important tool for the agriculture. Exactly, yeah. exactly. And they eat the flour, like the wheat made things mainly here. Mm, uh -huh. mm -hmm. For example, the uh, steamed buns, yes. the dumplings, and yes. this kind of different kinds of biscuits here. Wow. 
Uh, not uh -huh. only that, there are a lot of things actually uh, imported uh -huh. through the Silk Road here. Okay. We could have a glimpse. Ah. For example, this kind of uh, ships. She's Nowadays, were imported through the ancient Silk Road. This type of ships. Okay. In Chinese, we call them what kind of ship? Mianyang. Mianyang yes. Mm -hmm. But <clears throat> back then, uh, it's called Hu Yang. Hu Yang. Because it's foreign. Like foreign. foreigners, we call them a Hu Ren. Yeah. yeah. So Hu means foreign. Hu means foreign. Yeah. So a lot of uh, things uh, and food, starting with uh, Hu, uh, are <coughs> very important along the Silk Road, for example, mm -hmm. like Hu Luo Bo, uh, oh, uh -huh, Hu carrots, oh. uh, pepper, mm -hmm. uh, Hu Jiao, uh, cucumber, Hu Gua, oh, uh -huh. wow. uh, and grapes. Also, the spinach from Persia, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and the pomegranates mm -hmm. from Central Asia, mm -hmm. so, and walnuts, like walnuts were called Hu Tao. Hu Tao? Yeah. Makes sense, yes. Yeah, a lot of things uh, uh, that we are having, enjoying today, thanks to the Silk Road. Definitely, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So, Epi, this is the end of our tour today. Mm -hmm. How do you feel? Wow, um, I think this museum is really an important testament to the ancient Silk Road. I mean, here we can immerse ourselves in the vibrant culture of Tang Dynasty and yeah. experience, you know, people's unique way of life back then. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think the coins, the tex textures, and even food that travel along the ancient Silk Road can be found in this museum. So it's really amazing. Yeah, I'm really glad you like it. Mm -hmm. So what impressed you most? I think what struck me the most um, was the extensive scale of trade and exchanges back in Tang Dynasty, which really reflect uh, the openness and inclusiveness of, of the Tang Dynasty. Yes, exactly. And I think the spirit of openness and inclusiveness is carried on to today's Belt and Road Initiative. Mm -hmm. Do you think so? Yeah, I think so. Mm -hmm. All right. So uh, with that, I would like to, uh, that will wrap up our today's live stream. And mm -hmm. I would like to say thank you once again to Christina. Thank you so much for your wonderful introduction. You're welcome. IP. Thank you. Thank you. And I hope our audiences enjoy our live stream. And yeah. uh, that's all for today. And we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye bye. Greetings from Xi'an, this is Hua Yiping with Xinhua News Agency. Well, I'm now at one of the ancient capital cities in China, Xi'an in northwest China's Shanxi 